Hi everyone, uh, I'm Kyle and this is Chad and we're here to talk to you about supercritical fluid extraction. Um, before we talk about how the extraction works, it's probably best to go over exactly what supercritical fluid is. Um, so if you can't remember, uh, it's defined as a species above the critical temperature and pressure. So the one shown here is for pure carbon dioxide and the critical temperature is 31.1 degrees Celsius. And the critical pressure is a whopping 7.38 megapascal, which is roughly 73 atmospheres. And so if you're using this in extraction processes, you're going to need uh, to, to pressurize carbon dioxide a lot. One of the properties of supercritical fluids is that they have extremely high um, dip solubilities, like a liquid, while having extremely low viscosities, like a gas which makes them really good in, super, or in extraction processes because they're able to diffuse into the um, matrices of the solute or the solvent itself and then extract the solute that you're trying to get. Which makes it extremely good in solid, or extraction solute from solid matrices. Which I'm talking about here in, just, in the supercritical fluid extraction process. Uh, the one shown here is uh, is a semi-batch process. Now, typically, supercritical fluid extraction is a batch process. And so, what happens is you have your feed here, which in our case is uh, uh, coffee beans that are going to be decaffeinated. And then, so you, you fill up your, your vessel with, with your desired um, product to be extracted. And then you have your supercritical solvent coming in. and it's able to diffuse into the pores of the coffee bean and it extract the, the caffeine in our case or any solute that you're trying to get out. Then you can, in certain cases, recycle the supercritical carbon dioxide. You have to, to condense it back down and then precipitate, regenerate, and recompress, reheat, and then recycle back into the process. Uh, and then in our case here, the precipitation regeneration step if you contact the condensed gaseous carbon dioxide with water, the water has a higher solubility than the non-supercritical carbon dioxide and is able to extract the caffeine from the carbon dioxide, which then you can recycle back in. So when looking at supercritical fluids it, extraction, it's best to look at how efficiently you're extracting the desired solute. Um, so this is a typical extraction profile of supercritical fluid extraction. Unfortunately, in the batch process itself, you're not going to be able to monitor this as it's going on. However, it's good to get a, a basic understanding of how supercritical fluid extraction works. And so you can see that there's two very distinct regions. There's an, an initial linear region here, followed by an exponential region uh, afterwards for a longer period of time. And so for this very short initial linear region, what's happening is that your solvent, your supercritical solvent, is extracting the solute readily available on the surface of, of your matrix. So in our case, it's, able, it's just taking the caffeine right from the surface of the coffee bean, and it, this happens very quickly. And then afterwards, you have the diffusion limited step, where your, your solvent or your supercritical carbon dioxide is going into the matrix of the, or the pores of the coffee bean and starting to extract the buried solvent. And so this step here is solubility limited and, and therefore is linear. And then this step is diffusion limited where, it's, uh, where the extraction ratio is dependent on the ability of the supercritical carbon dioxide to get into the coffee bean. So a very specific application of supercritical extraction is decaffeination. Now personally, I don't understand why we want to remove caffeine, but some people don't like caffeine in coffee. So when you actually do supercritical extraction, you don't want to remove the constituents that give coffee its flavor. So you want a very specific <coughs> solvent, or a very selective solvent. Now, water extraction is used commonly, except this requires you to actually make an extraction or extracting solvent which is filled with all the water-soluble constituents, so only caffeine dissolves in. However, for supercritical fluid, it's very specific for caffeine, and there's only mild changes in the other constituents. 
So, for extractor sizing, uh, basically to know how big the extractor has to be because it's a batch reactor, you have to know like how much your like mass of copper beans are running in each batch. So, assuming a 300 day year and 5,000 tons per year, and also using this equation, which if you assume that the copper beans are spherical and that they have a constant surface concentration, then you can use radial diffusion, which gives you a B and K value. Let's state it up there. And from here, you can actually determine how long it'll take to reach a certain extraction ratio. Now, for water extraction, it's normally 98%. So, generally, you want your percent extracted to be over 97 because you don't want to have an extraction process which is less efficient than previous methods. So, for ours, we use 98%, which results in approximately five hours to achieve the actual extraction ratio we desire. Now, we added on top of this for each day approximately two hours for running, like adding in the CO2, filling up the tank, and emptying it because of the actual batch. Um, each batch end up being in volume. Well, after dividing up the time, you ended up getting a certain mass per day, and using that mass, you can actually correlate it to the volume in the extractor. So we assume immiscibility, which is unrealistic. However, it also gives a larger a size approximation, so it's a maximum value in the tank. So. Here on the left hand side you have mass of beans over the density of beans, where approximate value was between 560 and 700. 560 was sort of the entire bean, just looking at a single bean. 700 was plus, like it was the entire bean itself, it was ground. And also using the solubility, because if you have the mass of caffeine divided by the solubility, you can get the moles of CO2 you need to get that solubility. And also then divided by the density of CO2, you can get the volume of CO2 needed. Uh, the solubility we used was approximately at 0.025, that's an empirical value. Uh, the actual way you would solve it is using fugacity and a whole bunch of mixing coefficients, which was ugly and not a good high system to do that. So the actual volume we ended up getting was around 24 meters cubed. So the actual cost of our extractor uh, for 24 meters cubed, we modeled it as a single pressurized vessel and a set of pumps because pretty much the extractor is one unit, which is a <coughs> giant pressurized vessel and it needs to have pressurized CO2 going in and then leaving after the extraction. So the total cost of this is going to be around 180,000 plus or minus 65,000 except the operating cost of running this extractor is actually 50,000 or 51,000 annually, which is actually a significant ratio of the entire capital cost. So therefore, the actual major cost is in operating the system versus actually buying the equipment. So the optimization could be done on the pressurization and temperature of the CO2, or also perhaps changing it to a semi-batch process, so it's a continuous running in the CO2 and over the beans and then continuous leaving and then when you need to change the batteries, the extraction is complete, you stop the CO2 and 